Hey everyone, it's Bob Crossan, Senior Managing Editor for Water and Waste Digest. I am here with Nadine Robertson. She is a wastewater treatment operator for Veolia North America in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I am bringing you yet another WWD Young Pros video interview. You've noticed throughout the course of this month that we've interviewed a bunch of them. Please check out the video playlist in the description below, as well as the link to all the Q&As where you can learn even more about them. The questionnaires that we did were much more thorough than this video interview will be, so please check those out as well. But first, let's talk to Nadine. Nadine, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you taking the time. No problem. Thank you for having me, Bob. I'm excited about this. Yeah, well, congratulations. I think that's the first order of business is congratulations on being a young pro for 2022. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk, I start all of the conversations this way about like understanding career path. Could you talk a little bit about how you got to where you are? What were the steps you took to get there? And overall, why water? <laughs> sure. Well, um, I actually started in industry in a non-traditional way, I guess you could say. Um, started off um, doing safety attendant work in a chemical manufacturing plant. Um, and had no idea this was contracted work. Um, and so an operator at the plant suggested that I check into the community college, Nunez Community College, which is a local community college here, um, into their process technology, their PTEC program. And so I went to the community college and I found out about the process technology program. And so I actually was able to attend the community college on a fast track program. So from there, once I graduated, um, one of my high school friends is a, was an operations manager at a wastewater treatment plant at the time. I had no idea it was a wastewater treatment plant. I'm like, dude, I need a job. It was a plant, you know, so I reached out to him and it happened to be a wastewater treatment plant. Um, so of course I was hired, onboarded. Um, and I want to say maybe like two or three months on the job is when I got accustomed to the Water Environment Federation through a program through Limitless Vista, which is an AmeriCorps program that works with uh, local New Orleans residents to prepare them for careers in water, focusing around environmental and um, water conservation efforts. Um, so I was a part of this program. And in 2018, we were actually given the opportunity to attend West Tech because West Tech was held in uh, New Orleans that year. Um, and it's been blossoming ever since, let's just say that. Um, this program was called the Emerging Water Quality Scholars Program, um, renamed or rebranded now known as Inflow. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that obviously later in the interview, but it was an opportunity for me to just see how vast the water industry was by attending this, uh, this, this West Tech conference. Um, not just the equipment and the vendors having opportunities to speak with emerging young professionals and senior professionals within a water industry, just to kind of see what other careers were out there beyond uh, operations and maintenance and some of the things that I was introduced to at the plant, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you've it. It sounds like you've had like a lot of fun with the job. Is there anything about like specifically the core work that you do day to day that kind of brings you back? I, I get the feeling from a lot of the wastewater operators I talk to that they love talking about their bugs. <laughs> so, but, uh, is that part of the the draw to you, or like what's the what's the core thing that's just like, oh, this is why I love doing what I do? I I really enjoy you know troubleshooting day to day. I mean, there is some routine work that comes with doing a job, but it's a lot of troubleshooting, um, just, you know, using your senses, your ears, hearing different sounds when equipments are, you know, about to mal malfunction, um, visually inspection, stuff like that. Um, I primarily deal with fluidized bed incineration process. So safe, being safety conscious, because you're dealing with a pressurized vessel, you're monitoring flow, temperature, things of that nature. So I enjoy the troubleshooting and just the safety consciousness that you must have to work in this industry. Um, and it's enjoyable. It's a lot of science. Like, you know, you mentioned the bugs. There's good bugs and bad bugs, but 
Um, typically, a lot of people that I interact with are clueless about the water industry. So it gives me the opportunity to expose them to the science that's associated with running a wastewater treatment plant and also exposing them to the vast careers that's within the water industry. So I enjoy it. I really do. Yeah, that's a great segue into the inflow program too. Cause you talk about like a, a you talked about being kind of part of the the program in terms of being brought up by it as well. But could you talk about your work with inflow inflow and why that's meant so much to you? Yes. Yeah, so um, in two thousand twenty, I was actually um, I had the privilege of building and rebranding the inflow program along with uh, the water environment staff as an intern. Um, so in this capacity, an inflow is an acronym. Let me back back. Um, it's an acronym for introducing um, future leaders to opportunities in water, um, focusing more on minority um, students. And there's two tracks. There's the career path track and there's the STEM path track. So one is focused on um, obviously a uh, students that's in college. And then the other track is for like the non-traditional people that's enter entering the workforce and is new to water. Mm -hmm. um, so in this role, I was able to help develop the program. Uh, it was virtual this year due to COVID in 2020. Um, so just, you know, developing the program, uh, recruiting speakers, helping to recruit participants and the schools that we reach out to are, amazing like it's from uh, uh hawaii a lot of hbcus like howard university it's a nice mix um and as well as um you know locally we partner with a local nonprofit, and in, in new orleans is limitless vista and so it's introducing local residents to these careers and i was a part of the program like i mentioned earlier in 2018 and it has played uh, impactful role in my career trajectory. So I can't say much about it, much more, you know, about it, but um, it's a really good opportunity. It really is. Yeah. We've had a couple other inflow people over the years in our Young Pros program, and it's very clear mm -hmm. that the people who go through that just excel. Like, there's, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, and it's clear, like, you're one of those people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're able to interact with so many different people, you know, and the opportunity and exposure to these connections is key. I mean, and, you know, you build relationships with other students and other professionals that's within the industry. You can reach out to them for career advice. You find out about different scholarship opportunities and uh, different career tracks that you can go down into different leadership programs and take advantage of it because I know I have and it it has been an excellent, excellent source. It For really sure. has. For sure. And I, I know that in the process of evaluating all the young pros and picking the ones we are going to feature, one of the big reasons why you were one of the people that we chose is not only for how you've excelled but also for how involved you've tried to remain in the water industry and work with associations could you talk about your association work and um why is it so important and so critical to you like why do you place such high value on taking part in that aspect of the industry gotcha so yeah i'm definitely very active within the water environment federation um their students and young professional committee I feel like it's important because the, the more you put in, the more you get out. Um, not just the connections that you make, just staying um, in the loop with the latest water bills, the latest water technology. I mean, it's going to help you do your job much better if you're staying in the loop and you're active and hands on. Um, and it's also important for me as a woman of color to you know, have an opinion and, and make my presence known because it's not a lot of um, female operators in the industry. Um, and so I would like to help increase and bring more diversity, equity, and inclusion into the water industry. So that's why I'm involved in the Water Environment Federation. And they have developed a task force and are taking on a DE&I initiative. So, they are definitely supporting, um, you know, introducing more minorities into the industry through the inflow program, and they are taking active steps, not just talking about it, but developing a task force. And I've also sat on 
strategic planning committees um, to work on strategic goals for the organization nationally. So they're doing their part and it's very important and I'm so appreciative of the opportunities that they have afforded me, so. One of the questions we ask on our questionnaire too is, uh, what is your hidden talent? We also have one that says, tell us a secret that no one else knows. A lot of people fill out this hidden talent one and they have some interesting things. And you had two interesting ones in yours saying that you are a self-taught mobile DJ and that you also know graphic design. I was really curious how that, how did that come about? Cause it's obviously you're doing a lot of like more of the science side of things. And these are very much the creative side of things. Uh, was that just an outlet that you needed or, and why did you choose those? Well, um, being in New Orleans, I mean, you're surrounded by jazz brands and mobile DJs and just the culture of New Orleans. We're a party city. So music and food and things of that nature, we, we a second in nature to us, basically. But I've always loved music. In college, I was a radio station uh, manager at the University of North Florida. Uh, Osprey Radio was the radio station. Um, so I ran a student campus radio station, um, and I had a show called, and I would interview local artists, um, in Jacksonville. And so as I was interviewing these local artists, they would start inviting me to their shows. And eventually I started managing some of these artists. Um, but I DJed a lot on campus, um, out in the crowd, um, when they would have concerts on campus, like for instance, Ludacris came one year, I was the opening DJ for him. But I've just always loved music and mobile DJing is just like filling the crowd and, you know, keeping the flow going. So to me, it's, it's easy. Um, and graphic design just became out of the need of having to learn how to make flyers, you know, to cut costs when I was managing these artists because they didn't really have a budget. So it's like, you're taking on multiple roles. You're the accountant, you're their therapist, you're driving them around, you're booking gigs for them. You're doing like the whole shebang. So that's kind of how I started um, learning how to DJ and also learn graphics just out of the need of cutting costs and trying to help these artists get to the next level at the at the risk of getting a lot of groans i I, i'll i'm going to say this but you did bring up a good pun of keeping the flow going and i had to make the connection between that (laughs) (laughs) to water water, but um that's so cool it sounds like so many fun opportunities and a lot of experiences that are just really just baseline fun experiences that's so cool yeah, I mean, it really is a unique factor because you don't see a lot of female DJs and people are like, what, you spin records? You can you can scratch on a turntable and mix and all that? And I'm like, yeah. That's so cool. Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, that that's awesome. I love that. And I, I, I know that there is like a lot of movement with that. You talked about diversity, equity, and inclusion. I know U.S. Water Alliance has a lot of like this one water stuff. And part of that is doing arts and culture and bringing that into the fold of water conversations. And um, maybe that's something you can tap down the line. That'd be so cool to have you do some, some musical stuff when it comes to, to water and whatnot, too. Yeah, definitely. Um, I am uh, aware of their um, One Water Change Maker program, their mentoring program. I actually applied for that, so I'm hoping to get some good news maybe <laughs> within a month or two. Um, but yeah, they're they're great. That's a great organization. Cool. And I have one last question here. I'm asking this of all the young pros. I, I think it's a really valuable one to ask the young pros specifically this, which is for the people who are going to come up behind you to be in the water industry like how are you going to how do, how would you cater to that next generation of water worker to the people who are going to be right behind you in line that are of a different generation similar to like we're a different generation than the xers and the baby boomers as well but um, when you look at the next generations how do you want to cater to them um i would cater to them by mentoring to them introducing them to careers um, within the water industry I think a lot of it is um, people are just not exposed and unaware and they don't see the value of water and the value of uh, green infrastructure and all the moving parts that it takes to, you know, focus on water reuse and treating water and um, 
the safe, the, the safety and health components that's gonna go down the drain if we don't have water. I mean, you're not gonna be able to flush toilets, take a bath, do dishes, and it's a sanitary concern. Um, and so I definitely would focus more on mentoring and increasing DEI to underrepresented um, communities, especially those of color, because I just feel like they're not exposed to it. Um, and the opportunity is there. And I feel like um, if these people are brought into the industry, it can definitely help with the gray tsunami that we're facing in the industry because a lot of people are retiring and there's just not enough people um, interested in water who is available to, to fill those jobs. Mm -hmm. So some type of outreach has to, to be done. It harkens back to how you got involved in the industry, right? You were doing this other work and someone exposed you to it. Had you not been exposed, you may not even be talking to me right now, <laughs> you know, like, but it was that one catalyst created this opportunity for you that you found a passion that actually worked out for you. Right. Definitely. Definitely. I right. yeah. li live an example. Truly, I'm a living example. And that's why uh, I make it a point to you know speak on panels and do and like i'm just like you um and if you want to do a career change the opportunities are out there um you just have to put your best foot forward and get involved in these associations like the water environment federation awwa and there's a whole bunch out there for sure well thank you so much nadine it's been great to talk to you and to get to know you a little bit better and learn a little bit about uh about your past and a uh, lot of it, it, it's it's just very fun to talk to you. <laughs> no problem, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to see you around at Web Tech and um, stay in contact with me. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to meet up at, at Web Tech. So, for everyone who's watching, please check out the video description below. Again, we have playlist for all of the video interviews to date, as well as some Q and As. And once again, to Nadine, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.